Finland can boast an extraordinary success. Their 16-year-olds came top in maths in the OECD PISA study. Amongst the stream of teachers crossing the Baltic to try to understand their success is Nigel Bispen, a deputy head teacher from Cornwall. He's going to visit Yuka Sinivetta's maths class. This morning, Yuka's class is tackling equations for the first time. He's hoping for one of those special moments when a new topic dawns on his students. I think it's the, the little sigh when the pupil says that, uh, OK, now I've got it. Martin Larkso's school on the edge of Helsinki is a typical Finnish secondary school, teaching just over 400 pupils between the ages of 13 and 16. Nigel Bispam's Science and Community College at Camborne in Cornwall dwarfs them, with over 1,200 pupils below the sixth form. The Finns get the best maths results in the world, and I simply want to find out what's happening in the classroom. How do they do it? Finland's 16-year-olds are the top performers in mathematics amongst the 30 OECD countries. They outrank the traditionally strong Far East nations. Siinä on vain annettu eri vaihtoehto, että mikä näistä voisi olla tuon tasapainoehto. Eli siellä on x plus 1 plus 1. Kyllä, että löytyykö sellaista? Joo, Jukka has invited Nigel to sit in on his double maths lesson. I already saw some relief. Okay, it's this simple. <laughs> it's starting to click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think it'll click for all of them? Uh, I'm, I'm moving around to see it, to ensure it. Right, okay. Yeah. Katsotaan, katsotaan se aika siihen. Tuolla puolella, paljonko siellä on? Kyllä. Jos ne on tasapainossa, siellä täytyy olla 20. Siis ei 2x plus 2, vaan 2x. 2x on yhtä kuin 20 on se. Jukka, tell me about the conversation you had with this student. He was just guessing that could it be like this. And now we had the little trouble that it didn't match to the cut of the, of the scale. It didn't have the 2x plus 2. It only had the 2x. And we corrected it, and uh, now looking, yes, now you got it right. Yuka is teaching a class of 22, far smaller than the 30 to 35 Nigel is used to. And Yuka's class is not streamed. This student has already tackled equations. He's working three pages ahead of the rest of the class. You, you don't mind working on different stuff? Yeah. That's not matter. It doesn't matter. Well, it's poised. Well, also, what is a nice situation, he now and then gives me some extra support with the, with the basics. When we're discussing about well, what happens here, I, I don't have to give the answers he does, or somebody else. But mm, I'm trying to find out what this act means. Yes. Mm. Now you have a problem with the, with the right side. What is it? Oh. Fascinating. He's straight ahead of other pupils, being given some extra lessons, but all he's doing is working a couple of chapters ahead of everyone. Uh, actually, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of, of course. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're quite right. Well done. He's doing a very good sort of plate spinning job. He's got kids right at the top end, obviously excelling. But then others who were only just keeping up. Do you like maths? <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's something you, it's a, you find it hard. It seems that most of them, very much like UK pupils, find maths just too hard and they're thus less interested. And yet, ultimately, they're going to get much better results than our pupils. I do wonder if it's got something to do with the fact that they're not streamed and they've just simply got to keep up.
streaming and class size. Two issues Nigel wants to discuss with Yuka after the lesson. But first, Yuka wants to hear Nigel's impressions of maths in Finland. What was your idea about the PISA results? I mean, I am totally in awe of the standards you achieve in mathematics. You are basically, you are leading the world by the standards that your pupils achieve. I was reassured to find that the pupils are just like the pupils that I have at home. I hope you don't mind me saying, but when I asked them, they said, no, I don't particularly like maths. I find it hard, I find it difficult. One detail in the international survey that's caught Nigel's eye is that Finnish students get far less stressed when they're given maths homework. In countries like Japan and France, 50% of the pupils reported that they feel tense and anxious about doing maths homework. Only 7% of pupils in Finland said that they felt tense. I mean, you are 50% higher again than most countries. How do you keep them going? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I have the, the, the one simple answer. Actually, uh, this morning's newspaper were, were uh, giving us an interview of a philosopher who had an idea that all the Finns, as a national uh, skill, we are a bit of philosophers. We'd like to sit down and think. And maybe it's uh, one of the little explanations, but also the spirit that uh, this is a nice place to come. It's good to see not only your good friends, but also the teachers and, and uh, get together for the good work. It seems like something magic must be happening. We are very proud that we have achieved good results in mathematics. It's refreshing to see that you're just a normal teacher but what, what I don't think is normal, what I think is special, is the personal side. The human factor, is, I think, is the thing that's overwhelmed me more than anything else. And your system, the whole ethos of your system, the size of your schools, the size of your classes, enables you to keep the human factor. And at the end of the day, surely that's what education is about. <laughs> Now it's Nigel's turn. He wants to discuss some specifics with Yuka. He's going to start right at the beginning of the lesson. I was really interested by the start of the lesson. The pupils all stood up, almost without prompting. You stood up and then you bowed to them. Can you tell me a little bit about that? It has been my habit for 30 years because I think that the, the future of Finland is standing in front of me. So. I give my respect to them. That is incredibly touching and I feel I'd, I'd like to take that home and do that. It was the first lesson on equations. Yes. I noticed that you spoke to the class for almost 20 minutes in introducing the subject. Is that usual with classes? It's quite usual, not necessarily that long, but I knew that we had a double lesson, so I could start with a little longer introduction. We couldn't do that. I mean, I'm a good communicator, but I would die on my feet talking to 30 pupils. I was particularly interested because you were doing algebra for the first time by the two girls at the front. And I watched them starting the exercise and it, it just, it wasn't happening for them. They really were at the point of drowning. You gave her the, the first example and she sat down and she wrote down something which was transparently wrong to obviously you and I, but you gave her a lot of time. Tell me about how you worked with her. I was trying to give her more questions, not the answers, to kind of stimulate her to get the picture. In this case, particularly, it's important because she's a person who gets uh, a bit irritated quite easily. Well, I don't like it because it's, it's too difficult and, and, <laughs> and, and, and she can, yeah, yeah, I see that. she can get a bit angry. I, I don't like it, but afterwards, please, please be patient. Try once again, for my sake, please. And she tries it once again and, oh, Okay, okay, and the spirit is there. 
But in the second half of the lesson, they had moved on and they were doing the same activities that the child who'd had the extra lessons, the gifted child, was doing. Ja nyt se on valmis. Ja nyt sä oot selvittänyt sen ehdon, jolla tuo tasapaino on olemassa, eli tämä tasapaino yhtälö toteutuu. Eikö niin? Hyvä. I'm particularly interested in this resilience, that they didn't give up. What concerns me in our education system is that we would have possibly lost her, she would have kicked against that, and they said, no, I can't do it. You've got a way of keeping her going through just the spirit and the culture that you have here. Just take your time to read it first. Yes. Uh, yes. Nigel's got one final question for Yuka. This was a mixed ability class. Would you be allowed, if all of the teachers of maths in your school wanted to teach, set the class into a street. Uh, Would you be able to do that? Actually, that is, a, that is a very fragile thing politically. Uh, the politicians in, in Finland tend to think that it's so nice and democratic that everybody can learn anything. That is why it's not really allowed to have these levels for the classes. Are you happy with the mixed ability? Uh, not in all cases. I would be happier if the group would be smaller. I would prefer something like uh, 14 to 16 pupils in one classroom. Then it's good to be mixed because, like uh, you might notice, we just uh, saw here, they were kind of peer-to-peer -peer tutoring. The yes, I saw that. The people were, were helping each other, not only giving the answers, but, but really supporting that take a look on this and maybe understand and so on. And this happens in, in mixed cases. Like I said, it, when, it, when it is something like 15 pupils, I'm happy if it's mixed, no problem with that. How would you feel about teaching a mixed class of 30 to 35 pupils? It would pupils? be a nightmare, really. Would I, you, I couldn't do it. Would you carry on teaching? Uh, uh, possibly not. You'd actually stop teaching? Yeah, I That's think so, I think so. Really? Because really, uh, the, the future of the pupils, the, the work that is done here, it, it is, is so much more important me, for me than the, than the, the idea of, of mat mathematics. That's very interesting. I, I it's... think I, I'm, I'm something, something that is really taking care of the future of Finland. And if it doesn't work, I would, I would give up, really. Nigel arrived in Finland expecting to find a key to the country's success in maths. What Yuka showed him was something more fragile, the depth of the relationship between teacher and student. It's a lesson Nigel wants to relate to his own experience in Cornwall. It does actually make me stop and think, why aren't we at the top of the table? I think it is to do with the culture and the aptitude for learning. Yuka was without doubt a really caring and committed teacher. His passion and his belief in the pupils really shines through in everything he does. What was particularly impressive about the Finnish system is that he had the time to spend with the pupils to show his belief in them. All British teachers have got those skills, but there's far less opportunity for those skills to be at the front. We've missed the human factor somehow in a way that he was really able just to exercise it and make it work for those pupils. Mm -hmm.